In this video, we take a detailed look at a Schindler movable motor room lift. Now, this has to be one of the best innovations of lifts in recent years. On skyscraper lifts, while the building's under construction, they can now make movable motor room lifts. Cone has their version called the jump lift, and now Schindler also has their version. And these lifts are very interesting. Now, the problem this solves is how do you build a skyscraper? Like skyscrapers, like buildings like really tall, like 200 meters or so high, they take about four years to top out. But during those four years, you want to start construction on the interior of the lower floors before the structure of the building is complete. So to do that you normally use climbing lifts. But a problem is these things are extremely unreliable, very slow, very rattly, although very fun for me as a lift enthusiast, but for actual everyday use they are just not very good because they break down all the time. But since a building is going to have lifts anyway, why not just use the actual lifts to move the construction workers up and down the building. Well, because the interior needs to be constructed before the building is topped out, this is where the movable motor room lift comes in. Because on one of these lifts, the lift is installed long before the building tops out. As the building is built and the height increases, the motor room is then moved, so the lift can then serve more of the building. It is innovation that just works perfectly, it literally does the job great, because it now means that construction workers, rather than using a vastly slow climbing lift, can now use the proper, fast, efficient shinder lift before the building is actually finished. This solves many issues around skyscraper construction. Now on this Schindler movable motor room lift, it's actually got, as well as just a movable motor room, this lift also has a construction platform higher up in the shaft above the operating space of the lift. This is so that the lift engineers can install the tracks and the doors of the higher floors while the lift's actively in passenger service running below them further down the shaft. This means that the engineers are installing a lift while the lift's operating, which is very efficient for installation. So let's take a look at my diagram of how this lift works. At the bottom you have the lift car itself, then above it you have the motor room and this is the movable motor room that will move up as the building completes. Above this you then have the installation platform. This is a bit like how a lift runs in its early stages of installation where it's on a winch and the lift engineer can drive it up and down to install the doors and tracks for the lift. Then above this is the lifting platform where the motor to run the winch up and down runs from and it's also where the motor to lift up the booth where the motor room runs from. Then above this will be the top of the building where the concrete factory is, where the concrete is poured and moves the building upwards. So now let's take a look at a glossy video from Schindler's website and anyone who's watched my channel for a while will know I'm not particularly grabbed by Schindler's glossy videos. Usually I try and advertise things like proprietary restrictions, internet of things, Schindler gets to monitor your lift. Oh isn't it lovely that Schindler's watching your lift at all times. It definitely isn't a restrictive practice to try and lock you into Schindler's maintenance contract. I don't normally like glossy videos but this one's an exception because this one is not glossy for nothing. It's a glossy video because they've actually got for once a good product. So you can see here you've got your lift, then as the building is built you can see the winching platform is raised up in the building, the movable motor room is then raised up in the building along with the lift car, you can have the engineers using a winching platform above the lift's operating space to install upper parts of the shaft while the lift's running in the lower parts of the shaft. And this innovation is great, there's nothing I can say to fault this, this is a really good system and this will save loads of money on climbing lift high since they're using the actual lift which is going to be in the building anyway once the building is complete this lift's then going to be converted into the normal passenger lift and also save loads of time that a workers actually get to use a real lift rather than a silly climbing lift. So now I'll go along to Consort Place. This is a skyscraper under construction in South Quay. When it tops out, it's going to be 215 metres high. So it's the middle of the night, it's 3am. Let's go and explore it. And along I go to the lifts. Let's now surf the lift. So here I am on top of the lift. This is what a car top looks like. This is a skyscraper lift. Look at how big the wheels are on the lift. This is going to go 6 meters a second when the building opens. Then if we take a look up the shaft, up above is the movable motor room. So now let's surf the lift as high up as the lift can currently go. Yeah, it's a movable motion room. Where's a fucking chain run, huh? Yeah, it's a movable motion room. Yeah, that's as high as it goes. And that motor room's gonna move. Yeah. So when the building goes up, that motor room will be winched up. Yeah. Movable motor room. So I've now reached 
the limit of how high the lift can go. Above is the movable motor room. Let's now get out of the lift and walk up the stairs. And here I am, one floor below the movable motor room. If you take a look here, you can see the motor room just above me, and you can see this motor room can move, it can go upwards, meaning this motor room is powering a lift. But at the same time, the motor room itself is also a lift, since it can move, which is weird, but very innovative. So on the next floor up is the motor room, but sadly I did not manage to get in the motor room as I didn't have the key for it, which is very disappointing. So I go up to the next floor, and I'm now one floor above the motor room. If we open up the doors here, we can see the motor room is below me. And this bit below me looks like a car top of the lift. It's not. This is the car top of the motor room because the motor room is in a box. This is to protect the motor. So the lift engine is on the winch above this. If they drop anything, it won't damage the motor. So I'm fairly high up in the building now. Over here is the climbing lifts. This building's got four climbing lifts, two smaller climbing lifts and two larger dual motor, dual track climbing lifts for lifting up the heavy equipment in the building. Now it's interesting that this building uses both climbing lifts and movable motor room lifts. And if it wasn't for the movable motor room lifts, I estimate this building would actually need eight climbing lifts rather than four. So these movable motor room lifts really are doing their job. So we now continue higher up the building. Let's take a look into the lift shaft up here. And up here is the winching platform. The winch platform's below this, and that's what the engineers use to install stuff in the shaft. Up here is the motor for that platform, as well as that is also the motor to lift up the movable motor room. So I'm now about halfway up the building. Let's now take a look at the climbing lifts. And one of the climbing lifts is stopped up here. At 3am, why would the climbing lift be up here rather than pop down the bottom? That's because it's broken down. This is a Stross climbing lift. Let's go up to the next floor and take a look on top of this climbing lift. I don't know why it's broke, but I'm guessing it's probably some sort of mechanical failure knowing what these things are like. The doors are shut, that's why. The doors are... No, that's, oh. not, that's not plugged in. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. That one's not doing anything, and this one... It's not... Oh, that's a shame, I wanted to drive this. We're halfway up. Are we halfway up? Yeah, halfway. I know a bit more than halfway, maybe. Slightly over halfway. That's what I could do that clean previously. And we go into this room where there is an orange light. This room's quite creepy. Although I was half expecting to see some cannabis plants in this room. So I now continue up the building and up beyond where the interior of the building is being constructed. Going further up the building, only the frame of the building is constructed, so it really looks a lot more like a building site now. Do you know I like building sites? Not too secure. It's more relaxed when they're like this. How come this one's very relaxing? I don't know. It's nice. It's it is quite relaxing, it's just not much security. Floor 34. Oh, it's more open up here. Look how much steam's coming out of Novotel. It's 
puffing it out, puffing it like a steam train. That's the crane I was at previously, was up there. That's where we were, and the people in the hotel down there snitched. Yeah, ceilings are high because can put out Wardian has 64 floors, a so big Wardian. This has definitely got higher ceilings than your typical tower because normally make the ceilings low in residential to fit in more floors. This has got surprisingly high ceilings. Wardian! They have lovely security guards in there. Now there's S big SQP and little SQP. We're actually building a third SQP, so little SQP is now being renamed medium SQP because the third one's going to be slightly smaller, but all roughly the same height, there's barely any height difference in the SQPs when they're done. Nearly as high as Madison. That there, that little land there's going to have three huge fucking towers soon. Oh, wow. Yeah, that square bit. There's loads more development here. Then over there, that piece of land there's going to have about four 200 meter towers in that piece. Then there's that on the other side, there's going to be Landmark Pinnacle, the fourth. They're pulling down an office block to build the fourth Landmark Pinnacle. So over in Bordian, what do we like to watch on telly? We like to watch. Oh, it's porn! No, it's not. No, it's... No! Fuck's sake. Okay, that's, that's getting blurred yet. out. That's, that's, no, I'm not looking. That's getting blurred out. Well, the people in Wardian watch questionable things. It's not expected. I am rich in Wardian as well. Rich people pay for prostitutes. <laughs> they had their windows wide open like they had no embarrassment. Well, I'm guessing I don't think anyone would be looking in. Yeah. The builders are right. Now let's continue right up into the factory of the building. The factory is where the concrete is constructed. Look at that concrete factory here. Yeah. Can't see it on camera because it's dark and I don't want to turn the torch on. I'm now going onto the dreaded overhang. I fucking hate these things. This is an overhang leaning out of the side of the building for the cranes to deposit stuff. Oh, that's your factory over near the top. That's your factory there. Cranes on, if we can get to it. And now we go up to the top of the building. This building is about 160 meters high. And now we go up to the very topmost point of the building. It's a weird sort of spiky mess this is. Uh, spiky mess time, it's like an art piece. This is the highest we can get to a minute. We are, oh we're taller than Little Landmark. Little Landmark's there. Little Wardian, we're almost the height of, not quite, but like a couple of metres off the height of Little Wardian. And Big Wardian is a little bit bigger. Both penthouses and both Wardians are empty. If you look in, you can't really see it too well on the camera. There's nothing in those, they're unoccupied. So Wardian's pet houses are not in use. Over there we've got SQP, big SQP and little SQP is the building site. Behind that is Madison and we can't see it from this angle. So we've got here the Landmark Pinnacles. You've got Landmark Pinnacle, Little Landmark and Little Little Landmark which you can't see from this angle. But also down the bottom which we also can't just see, it's the building being pulled down for Landmark the fourth. So much development here, it's crazy. I think some of those buildings down there are going to be pulled down soon. Like some of those, that little shitty thing down there, I think that's getting pulled down. Really, in this area, that's going to go. Skyscraper will be put on that. Those houses there, depends if they're freehold or leasehold. If those are freehold and some people actually own that freehold and they refuse to sell, they could have like a little house in amongst all the skyscrapers. But most likely the pressures of selling will make them sell up and then there'll be enough skyscraper there. You can't really see directly down because the building's in the way, but some a couple of other little builds down there are going to go, definitely going to go. There's one right next to DLR that's being knocked down right now for another skyscraper. In ten years' time, this place will look completely different. Like ten years ago, you could look back Google Earth, like, say, 2009, it's unrecognisable. None of these buildings in South Quay here, like Canary Wharf is there, but South Quay, 
it's not there like 2009 give it another 10 years it'll be unrecognisable again the amount of buildings that will go up in this area plus the rest of the Isle of Dogs is probably going to join it because it will spread so it's gone from here then it's going to head down Cross Harbour then eventually it's going to head down Mud Chute and eventually the whole of the Isle of Dogs will be skyscrapers which will probably be 20 or 30 years away but that will be amazing when it gets to that stage Thank you.